weeks, we're now approaching 16 weeks and counting. And now what's their next stall tactic? They tell you they're gonna, you tell you you're gonna open, so you sit at home and you, you sit by the TV and you say, well, you know, I don't really believe in the, what the government's telling me, but all the news stations are telling me I'm gonna open soon, so I might as well just wait. <laughs> the next stall tactic, my friends, is called regional openings. So they're gonna let restaurant patio open way up in Thunder Bay. <laughs> That'll be around June 30th. That's what you're gonna see. For Canada Day, if you wanna have a Canada Day barbecue, you're gonna have to drive up to Thunder Bay. Because that's the only place that's gonna be open by then. This gives them the ability to every week or two just open up a few places. The GTA is going to be the last place to open and it represents pretty much all the businesses. Do you know how many small businesses there are in Canada today? Well, maybe not today. Maybe three months ago this was the number. There were over 1.15 million small businesses. Whoa. That number represents 97% of all the businesses in Canada. 70% of all jobs in Canada. And just within the last few months, since March 16th, we know that at least 20% of those businesses are gone for good. That's about 250,000 businesses just wiped off the face of the earth forever. They're not going to be replaced with anything. They're just gone. The people they employed are now jobless. They are now collecting unemployment from the government that we're going to pay for with our taxes. And the cycle continues. If we allow them to do what they're doing, I said it before, I know this is going to sound repetitive, but every, day, every time I say it, it has more clout because I've been right about everything else so far. Sorry to say. Thank you. Thank you. Not always, but Quite, quite often. With the regional opening stall tactics and their social distancing guidelines, they plan on milking this as long as we allow. They will keep it going. The GTA will not open until maybe August, September, just in time for their second wave that everybody knows is coming, everybody knows they've already planned for, and everybody knows they're already prepping for. It's coming. So if your business opened maybe a month before they're gonna have their second wave and you're at 50% capacity, are you gonna survive that second lockdown? No. Absolutely not. So that's what we started back to work for. Last week I was a little bit distracted with the Fearless Ontario start. We had to speak twice. I also had a death in the family. Non-COVID related, I have to point that out because, you know, thank you. Oh, it, oh, to make matters even worse, when I went to the funeral home, they tried to make me fill out a contact tracing form. Oh. <clears throat> a sneaky one, too. They make you answer normal questions on the front that makes you think you're just filling out the normal form you fill out when you go to a funeral home. Then when you turn on the back, they ask for your signature, and there's a legal disclaimer telling them how all your information is going to be provided to health officials, and you're legally liable for anything you've said. Excuse me? I'll just say they didn't get their form from me. Yeah, read the fine print, definitely. So, we're being attacked at all. If they're that depraved that they will try to attack you, track you, take your freedom from you while you're grieving the death of a loved one, you think they're really going to let you open your business? But Costco and Walmart's been open. Costco and Walmart, of course, if Walmart's been open. I would also like to point out, Walmart's at its highest of all time. Guess who one of the top ten shareholders of Walmart is? The Bill and Melinda Gates Philanthropic Foundation. Yes, yes. Top 10 shareholder of Walmart. We're going to point that out. So what are we doing with Back to Work? I just started the fundraising. We got some thousands of dollars. I'm going to be going around to a lot of businesses next week, especially essential ones that are going to have to support the non-essential ones. This is going to be a community effort. But what are we doing? Everybody seems to be confused. I talked to dozens of businesses, and I know they all have one thing in common. Well, two things. They're completely confused, and they are absolutely terrified. Terrified! The government is good at fear. I'm not going to lie. They're very good at what they do. So what did we do at Back to Work? Not only are we building an anonymous network. Anybody who signs up, I am the only one who will know your business is in there. Not even the legal team will know unless you ever get charged with anything, which you won't. The second thing we're doing is 
we are experts on the new rules and the new codes. These things were written really quickly. They have a lot of loopholes. There's a lot of things you are legally allowed to do at your business, even though you are not allowed to open. We have ways for you to legally generate income from your businesses without fear of government reprisal. This is a means to allow you to buy yourselves time to stay afloat. So our other measures of trying to end the lockdown can work and you guys don't have to close your businesses. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we're doing here. When I say we're trying to get people to open safely and efficiently. Back to work. Thank you. Back to work. Back to work. Back to work. Back to work isn't just a slogan. It's not just a thing, it's not a group, it's not a non-profit. It's literally an essential. It is the most important thing right now. We have a lot of issues on the table. A lot of issues. They're not dumb. They hit you with everything at once to make sure that they can get as much from you as possible. But the most important, the most pressing issue is getting people back to work. If you do not get these people back to work, and the economy crashes, we will be in a perpetual cycle of higher taxes, lower standard of living, and government control, the likes of which you could not even imagine. It will be disgusting. And if you think it's gonna get any better, just remember, they do closed door votes, secret votes, to make sure that you don't know who's voting against your best interest. So you can't hold them accountable, so you don't know who to vote for, and you don't know who to vote against. Think about that for a second. Dictatorship. It's worse than a dictatorship because they give you the illusion of choice. At least when people have a dictator, they see their enemy. They know their enemy. It's easy to unite against their enemy. In our case, the enemy is trying to tell you they're your friend. They're looking out for you. And what are they really doing? They're trying to turn everybody against each other. They got the people that don't work turned against the business owners. They're happy to stay home and collect 2000 and more than happy to call you irresponsible for trying to feed your family and not lose the livelihood that you spent the last years of your life building. So it's all about perspective. All these things they're doing, division amongst race, using terrorist organizations like Antifa, which the government fully endorses behind the scenes, by the way. If you think that their government is not endorsing the riots that are going on right now in the states and doing everything they can to try to make them happen here you need to open your eyes they want that they want that fear what have they done so far first they use the fear of the virus to put you in your homes and take away your rights now they're using the fear of government power against you to keep you in your homes and keep you from even working like think about how ridiculous that sounds if i told you six months or last year or any other year that the government would have the power to stop you from going to work and the power to tell you that you have to stay home sit there and let your life slip away or they will literally put you in jail you would look at me like i was crazy you would call me a conspiracy theorist you would call me bad names and you would just write me off but here we are you have to remember one thing what is Canada? If you ask a lot of people that question, you'll get a lot of different answers. But you can go anywhere around the world. I've been to 36 countries so far. And when I tell people, when, wherever we go, we meet people. And the first thing someone asks you when you're abroad, what do they ask you? Where are you from? Thank you. Where are you from? And when I tell them Canada, the first reaction is always a big smile. Yeah! Canadians! Why Happy to see you! Because all around the world, not just in Canada, around the world, Canadians are synonymous with freedom of choice, synonymous with opportunity, high standard of living, and because of the combination of those things, we're known as very friendly, trustworthy people. Very polite people. Hell yeah. Thank you. Okay. That's what Canada is known for. Weird, so Canada, Canada is not that way anymore. <laughs> it's not. Like, people around the world might not have realized it yet, but if we stay like this, their new normal, please say it with me, no new normal! Yeah! If we're even, if we're even worthy enough to get a travel pass to escape Comrade Canada within the next couple of years, where we go abroad to places that actually still have a semblance of freedom, and they say, where are you from? And we say, Canada. I don't think I'm going to get a smile anymore. And that's how I feel. That's how I truly feel.
check. We'll get a look of pity. We'll get the look like when someone asks us and we say, where are you from? And they say a country you've never even heard of before. That's what the kind of look you're going to get when you say Canada. Third world status. That's where we're heading. We're heading there. We're heading third world economic status. And we're heading to communist style dictatorship tyranny faster than you can possibly imagine. And the population, by and large, is not only complicit, they're just completely oblivious. Which is scary as hell. And that's why these protests are so vital. Randy Hillier said it himself. We are making a difference. Big time. People are talking about us. The media is talking about us. They can't call us crazy anymore because people see that the lockdown is being extended. Even the, even the most compliant, trustworthy people that think government has their best interests at heart are, st are starting to see through what's going on. Thankfully, thankfully, I have faith in humanity because I know that most humans are procrastinators and business owners will wait till the very last hour before they decide to go up against the government. So I'm waiting for necessity to kick in all you mothers. Just saying. Apparently no one's desperate enough yet, but it's coming. It's definitely coming. The bottom line is, the fact that we showed up today when they tried to use a virus to scare us, they tried to use the government to scare us, they tried to use rumors of threats and violence, direct violence against us just for coming here to scare us. Oh, and, thought, and of course the ridiculous grants of racism and right supremacy. Canadian supremacy. Canadian civilian supremacy. And government that works for the people. It's that simple. We want our old normal.